So hi, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, very happy to be here this afternoon. Uh, greetings from São Paulo, uh, from Brazil. Um, so today's topic, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the view meditation and conduct uh, from the Dzogchen point of view. And there are so many people uh, practicing uh, different form of spiritual tradition, different form of Buddhism, and there are many people also practicing like a Dzogchen, the, uh, the path of liberation or the teaching of great perfection. So, um, just wanted to say what what is the simple understanding of this view, meditation, and conduct. The reason why I'm saying very simple, of course, there's nothing is very simple, but uh, I think things can be simpler than we can make it more complicated. So, what will be the a simple way to look at it? What will be the simple way to apply it? And how do we know actually if these practices somehow working in our ordinary life or not? Or even somebody who claims to be a, a, a master or serious practitioner of Dzogchen, but if you don't see some result in everyday life in a very simple places, then there is something uh, disconnected there. The, what we think of view, what th we think of meditation, and how its reflection, its manifestation in our everyday life, life, if it's missing, then there's something, something it's not connected well. So uh, that's uh, at least uh, my point of view. Um, so first, uh, the view in Tibetan we say, Tawa Thadal. Tawa Thadal. Boundless view. So what does this mean, boundless view? Of course, we all understand what does the boundaries mean, and what does a legal boundary, a social boundary, a religious boundary, ethical boundaries, there's so many different boundaries that we we know, we can create, we have. But what does this mean in a sense of Dzogchen? The boundless view is the most important thing to understand is the the one who is creating a boundary is the uh, pain identity, the ego, the grasping mind. We said Zimpa. Zimpa is the grasping mind. Um, so this uh, grasping mind, uh, in individualistic view of oneself, which is separate from other, which is separate from the environment, which is somehow trying to concentrate everything in one single place, very individualistic view. So that that individual or individual person uh, creates a lot of boundaries. So the um, of course, itself is a, a biggest creation of boundary. Ego itself is the biggest cre creation of boundary. But then it creates a lot of boundaries. And some boundaries, of course, it naturally exists there. We need to do respect and follow in a society. But there's so many other boundaries, unnecessary boundaries that we create. So it's the question about how much unnecessary boundaries that you create, how much of them you can actually get rid of them. So, and of course, if you look, one simple uh, manifestation of these boundaries are reflected very much in the society where we call, we put so much effort. Uh, we put so much effort in our life. We put so much effort in our work. We put so much effort in our relationship. 
we put so much effort trying to be good, even trying to be a better practitioner. We're trying to put effort in, in one single sitting meditation. We're trying to put effort to be having the best meditation. That's the way to use, that is the way to destroy your good meditation. So we put so much effort. The effort is actually a kind of, in a way, like a manifestation of that sickness. The disease of, of the ego, self uh, pain identity, uh, through which we create all these boundaries. So, so somehow, what is the what? Is, of course, if you look in a, like a Madhyamika system, there is a lot of a lot of intellectual, uh, philosophical, uh, epistemology, like a lot of logic to prove that everything is empty. In uh, nothing is inherently existing. Of course, those all are very important, very important part of culture, part of knowledge, wisdom, tradition. But also, I want to have to think more closely. It's not about everything is inherently exists or not. The most important thing is you have to look at yourself. You, the way you see, you feel, you identify, particularly the way you identify with your fear and pain, that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist the way you, you see it. So self-perception, which is creating a lot of boundaries, a lot of effort, and these boundaries, effort, it's limiting one's potentialities, one's live, able to live fullness, one's able to serve fully, one's able to uh, manifest fully, uh, manifest your best part fully, and these, these are what is creating condition. So in some sense, more recognition of that, those boundaries, unnecessary boundaries that we create, I think it's important to see how we can minimize them, lessen them. So that would be uh, the first, the bound, boundless view. I'm not saying that, you know, in reading something, meditating a little bit, uh, listening some talks, will immediately you will have experiences of boundless. No, no way. But at least to have some clear clue what, what it means, and particularly what it means to you, particularly what it means in every moment in your life, particularly what it means when you are creating more conditions which is not necessary for any mean for improve your life, when you are putting a lot of effort in your life, in any situation in your life which is more disconnecting to potentiality, preventing the success, preventing live fully, we just naturally is a common sense to just trying to put less effort, step back, back, go deeper, breathe deeper, look wider, see more. That's very common sense, I think. Now, the second part. The second part is uh, Gompa Rangsal. Gompa Rangsal. Gompa, gom, Gompa means the meditation. Rangsal uh, could be translated in a different way, but I would maybe translate that in saying self-arising meditation and this 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 sense of this meaning of self-arising i think is very very important self-arising uh, self-manifestation self-realization these are very important uh, because what does this mean in the deep inside what it means means no dualistic effort not effort of pain identity, pain identity, um, no effort of separation, divisions. Uh, it's it's manifestation of union, manifestation of oneness, manifestation of being true, true truly being, manifestation of uh, not trying, manifestation of from connectedness. Uh, this is what it means. So basically it means that mm, in single meditation, 
when is the best meditation? When you have the best meditation, for example, in a Dzogchen teaching, sometimes it says, um, um, no meditator is the best meditation. Without, no meditator is the best meditation. Without not trying to meditate, you might have the best experiences of meditation. Not trying to achieve anything is the time you might have more, a lot of realization. So what does that mean? It means when you are boundless, less boundary, or able to rest in a, that state of being, not doing, then naturally a lot of th things begin to happen by itself, by, this, by, by the power of being. Not power of doing, or power of trying, power of suffering, of not finishing, no. Just simply uh, the power of being is able to uh, manifest a lot, because, because there are so many things in our life, it's, it's ready to manifest. For example, if you think about even just simply in a body, how many activities happening in your brain? Unbelievable! How many activities happening in your heart? Unbelievable! But you are not in control. You are not even controlling your breath. Breath, breathing happening to you. When you are resting, breathe happens better to you. When you're fearful, your breath is not as good. So when you're breath being, you're breathing better. You are connected better. You are recovering better. You are connecting to your resources better. You are able to see and feel your potentiality better. Not only that, sometimes you are also naturally able to see uh, self-transformations are just happening around and within you, you are just simply witnessing like your breath. Transformation happens, it's, it's like a self-realization. It happens in that state of boundlessness or state of less boundaries. So that is what it means, I think, the sense of, I always kind of, in the, in the early time, I always wonder about what is the best way to explain that? You know, it seems like a gompar rangsa, okay, it seems like a kind of, I understand that, but what will the simplest way to explain? I think this is my, my sense is, this is the way to explain it. It's the experiences happens when boundaries are cleared. Transformation happens when boundaries are clear. Confident, confidence arises when fear is clear. The playfulness arises when you feel some certainty in you. So these experiences happens, arises by themselves. So that is the second part, which is... Uh, um, so what we're calling here is the... Gompa uh, Rangsal, self-arising meditation. So basically, uh, uh, boundless view we talked about. Uh, one of the biggest problem is the effort. Effort is a simple, simple thing that we all know. It interferes every aspect of our life when you try too hard. When you try too hard when it's not working. When you are able to be still, be silent, be spacious, connect deeper, rest deeper, trust that sense of being in the moment, become more familiar with that space, more and more familiar with that space, at some point you just see the fruition, it's already there in that state, which is self-arising meditation, self-arising experiences, self-arising bliss, self-arising awareness. So that is 
what he's saying. Basically, um, no dualistic effort needed when when you are able to rest in that uh, boundless view. The last one, the third one. Third one is uh, chupa means conduct, hlupa, hlupa is means flexible. So chupa, hlupa, a flexible conduct. And sometime uh, in, in the Dzogchen teaching it says like a uh, being like a crazy person. Okay, probably some of us already crazy, so we don't have to be trying to be crazy. But what is the character, characteristic of crazy person? Will be a crazy person will not repeat one thing again and again. It's not, it's not a predictable behavior like us. So we are so predictable. We know everybody, we, we, when we know each other, we know how I can make you angry or how you can make me angry. How I can make you depressed, how you can make me depressed, how, you, how we can make each other confused. We are very predictable. But a crazy person, it's very unpredictable. It doesn't say the same thing again and again. It does not do the same thing again and again. It doesn't appear to the same place again and again. It's unpredictable. So that sense of unpredictab unpredictability is uh, a quality which is some sense which is very good quality because you, you behave what environment is requiring, what social collective need is, what each situation needs it to its evolution, what a community collectively needs your contribution to its collective growth. Not something predictable which pain plan plans that you have created with your fear and pain into a, a group of people that you are trying to impose over them, which is, it has no place because, uh, yeah, it has no place, but you're trying to impose that again and again over them. There's no way you can help. It's, you're very predict predictable. The circumstances are unpredictable. Today's world, if you look at, even just simple as education, uh, business, world of business, you look, there's nothing is predictable. Politics, there's nothing is predictable. So be, being a very predictable behavior in very unpredictable environment, it's not a smart thing. So flexible behavior means, that really what it means in the Dzogchen tradition, means not being very predictable from that fear, not being very predictable from that pain, not being very predictable from that luck, how you say, a luck of uh, trap in conditions, uh, uh, not being, being very predictable for that blind eyes. Not being predictable, but be flexible uh, in moment to moment. Every moment changes, every situation changes, every situation's need changes, every person is changing. So what is, what, how you can serve the best in that place and position, it's only if you are truly open, not coming up with your plan or pain to help there. It, we, most of the time we fail in our behavior, in our conduct, in our conduct in terms of what we're trying to learn or in our conduct in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, in our conduct, in some, even what we're trying to do in a, in a world of business, trying to have some success. Our conduct in, in terms of even social work, we're trying to help somebody. Even, even one single individual, you are trying to help somebody. It's, the help, need of help is changing constantly, but you cannot be predictable. If you remain predictable, you will very less likely to be able to help that, help that person. Because who needs you, and what, what is needed, it's unpredictable. So you have to be a flexible that way. So how, how do one individual able to have that flexibility, have that, uh, able to see more, feel more, 
is only when you have this it goes back to this sense of meditation where awareness self 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 arising awareness is presence every given moment so it's not something that uh, you know what happens usually you see what you how you identify self 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 perception it's it's a, it's the limitation what you can perceive even the neuroscience saying you know like if you are if you are if you are with a friend and you are trying to climb the mountain it it looks like a easy you feel i can climb it easy because you are with somebody if you are with no one and you if you have to climb the mountain the mountain looks like a much harder to climb because even the sense of self changes if somebody is next to you your friend is next to you or not a sense of self changes if you are carrying a heavy weight on your shoulder or not if you are looking up the mountain if you are carrying a heavy bag the mountain gets higher in your perception if you drop the bag and your mountain gets lower in a, in a sense of in a sense of uh, because of your sense of perception you feel you you feel light so you you don't only feel light in this view you feel you are no one boundless view you are no one almost no one you are no one usually you think who you are you are no one the one who is always so obstacle in your life you are none of those now you have more free more space to allow these experience self arising experiences allow them because no one is there the one who is usually blocking all those experiences the one who is blocking joy sadness is the identity of sadness is not there joy is spontaneously arising identity of fear is not there so the confidence is self arising identity of limitation is not there the infinite possibility is arising so self arising experiences happens when each of these self identity blockages are able to overcome and as a result of that the conduct changes based on what self perception of self uh, perception of self is so with self self arising joy will conduct will be more related with that joy which self arising so not joy that you are seeking from somebody somebody's uh, somebody's uh, approval uh, uh, it you're not your joy is not dependent on anybody so you have less problem with anybody because joy is self arising joy is self arising because the fear or the sadness who is usually occupying your your sense of who you are has gone has been cleared or at least has been resting that a short moment in your meditation so this is uh, in a way um, a very simple way to look at it because the reason why i'm saying that is because sometimes people think about oh madhyamika or oh, dzokche this is something only people does in the cave this is only people does people who uh, lamas or uh, masters who because who has this who have that it's not for everybody not everybody uh sh- not able to get the teaching or not able to understand not able to apply that is i think true or not i think each what each person should uh, try and uh, try and trust and try within yourself and see if that is true or not so i think uh, in some sense that we all need to do, uh, stay open uh, as much as open possible for our growth our inner growth so so that is all for now i hope um this simple uh, explanation of um tawathadal gompa rangsal chopal rupa boundless view self arising meditation a flexible conduct so may you all 
experience this more space more openness in your life less effort in your life more spontaneously arising qualities the qualities which you need in this moment for your evol evolution your development may you all have not completely go crazy but a little bit crazy wisdom a little bit more flexible behavior a little bit more unpredictable from that unbounded space rather than being very predictable from that place of pain so thank you so much and uh, yeah I, I know last time I was uh, up in uh, California before I did my last uh, uh, Facebook live I did not know I will do this one or not but uh, um, here Brazilian Sangha took care of me very well I got a good good enough rest uh, and so I felt like okay I'm rested enough and uh, I can do this today so tonight I am taking my flight to to India to uh, meet my wife and my son looking forward to be with them for whole month so and uh, I, I I'm quite sure I'll be able to do some Facebook live uh, I wanted to be a little bit unpredictable and as far as doing the Facebook and I think it's good that all of you are also be a little bit unpredictable um, you know just not know when that next one is going to happen but whenever next one happens and I will definitely know day before or day uh, one or two day before so thank you so much uh, all my love and uh, yeah thank you so take care bye